intro to this series, we talked about kind of the different collaboration tools that exist for teams within Office 365, whether it be Groups in Outlook, Microsoft Teams, Yammer, or SharePoint Sites. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit deeper about the pros, cons, and some of the real gotchas that you've got with Microsoft Teams if you wanted to use that to collaborate inside of Office 365. Now, Microsoft Teams was kind of come out of the same work that was being done around Office 365 Groups, which is that core infrastructure that's running inside Office 365 to manage group membership at the Active Directory level and then provision a bunch of relevant products on top that you can use as part of your team. Now, it also incorporated this notion of Skype for Business and also Active Directory coming together as an engineering group with Exchange to build Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> Now, the main differences between, say, this notion of a group, which is very similar to groups in Outlook and Teams, is that Teams is really plugging into the Skype for Business paradigm. It's all about real-time chat. You'll see this word, this marketing buzzword flying around of high-velocity teams. The way I describe this is that, you know, developers that live and breathe and don't ever leave their desk because they're coding all day, more than likely, um, they'll always have their Slack window or their Microsoft Teams window up. And when someone posts in there, they expect someone to reply pretty quickly. With groups in Outlook and Yammer, it's probably not really likely that someone's gonna respond immediately. It's kind of more of a thing you visit at a period in the day. Um, and that's really how we see the Microsoft Teams being used. Now the power of Microsoft Teams is it is a multi-platform app. So it's pretty amazing that in preview, they released both a Windows and a Mac desktop client, as well as mobile clients for iOS, Android and Windows Phone. So you can really kind of use this thing wherever you are on the go. Now it's very sophisticated. It does feel a little bit like Slack in the sense that they have this notion of creating a new team, adding your members, and then inside that team, you have the ability to have different channels. So you get like the general channel where you'll have the majority of your conversations in real time with everyone that's a member of that team. But the cool part is, is that maybe you've got topic areas you wanna spin off. So for instance, in Hyperfish, we have a marketing channel and we have a sales channel and we have a roadmap channel where we can have conversations about that particular things without kind of filling up the general chatter. We also have things like the lunch channel where people kind of yell out, well, I'm gonna to go to Subway today and get my sandwich without having to kind of make noise on the main general channel. So rather than having to create individual teams for all of those things, those can be channels within a team, which is very valuable. The other cool thing about Teams, which is very different to kind of, I guess, one of the limitations I see of groups in Outlook is it's not all or nothing. When I create a Microsoft team, it creates my Active Directory group. I manage my membership of my team, which manages my Active Directory group, but I don't get everything up front. So if I want to go connect a plan in Planner or a OneNote or maybe a OneDrive for business or even a SharePoint document library, I can, but <clears throat> it's something you have to pick by the tabs at the top of the interface within that team. Now this is really useful because tabs are extendable. So already we had this announcement that now Yammer is gonna be part of the Office 365 Groups construct. Well that means now that because Teams is built on top of Office 365 Groups construct, I can go and add a tab and there's a GitHub project that allows you to go and connect a Yammer group against a Yammer team. Now the question would be why would you do that? Well. I'm not quite sure, but I think it highlights this, this notion that Teams is extendable to connect into, not just the conversations in real time we have on Skype, but maybe there are some parts of Yammer from a discussion thing that aren't so much as that obvious natural overlap that Teams has, in the sense that it's a bit more social uh, than in Teams. But I think that, that questionably is if I was going with Teams, I'm probably unlikely to use, use Yammer inside of it, but it just highlights the extensibility. But they can also do things like plug into other products that are not even in the Microsoft ecosystem. So I could have a project in maybe Trello and have that in a tab uh, and decide I'm not gonna use Microsoft Planner. So it gives me that extensibility that if I choose to, I can embed whatever I want within those views in those Microsoft Teams tabs. Now the other big bit, which is a huge buzz this year with technology and was starting to ramp up early last year, uh, was my, the conversational bots. Now I worked in the Azure team before uh, moving to Hyperfish on the Azure bot service from a marketing perspective and Microsoft Research done a great job with the Microsoft bot framework to make it super easy to build chatbots. Now out of the box there's a, basically a Teams help bot that you can chat to to kind of guide you around using the product. But they also have a coming, they've not released it now in the preview yet but they did talk about it when they first revealed this product, was a WhoBot. 
which in the demonstration, you could kind of ask it lots of questions to find people within your organization using that underlying Active Directory profile information of users. I see a huge future for Teams with that chatbot connection. It's the only um, one of these collaboration platforms in Office 365 that supports chatbots. Yammer hasn't got there and Groups in Outlook really doesn't suit it because it's email centric. I'm really excited to see what bots get built. You could have a chatbot inside of a t sales team within Microsoft Teams that maybe you ask it, when was the last time we talked to this customer? And it busily goes off to CRM and works out how, um, how long ago it was that someone communicated by email and just returns that date. So you can have that conversation with a bot without having to go and jump into the CRM tool and dig around the various different views in CRM to get that answer and kind of ask it in a natural language way. So I'm super excited about what Microsoft Teams means from a chatbot perspective. Now the other thing that it benefited from by building on top of the Office 365 Groups uh, aspect is that what, like Groups in Outlook, it has connectors. So all the connectors that were built for Office 365 Groups that work in Groups in Outlook, like kind of the Twitter ones and so forth, will also work in Microsoft Teams. So I can hook up like a Salesforce um, connector, which means that when an opportunity gets created in Salesforce, it automatically posts into my Microsoft Teams channel that activity. And then I can have a conversation in Microsoft Teams around what's going on in Salesforce. So it's a really cool way of automating that. Now we've seen this already out of competitors like Slack, where they have channels for things like automated builds, or maybe there's a bug that's occurred in production and it posts automatically in Slack, and then all the developers chime in on whose fault it is and who needs to fix it and so forth. So I really think that the connectors capability is gonna be super strong inside of Microsoft Teams as well. Now, this is a preview product. Um, there are some limitations right now. For instance, you can only have 600 members in a team. But because it's built on top of Office 365 groups, you've got to imagine that it's going to at least get to the limitations of what an Active Directory group is under the covers. I believe just for the preview, they've probably like kept it down so they can keep a good eye on what's going on. And they'll probably raise that number once they go into general availability. The other big stopgap right now in comparison to what can happen with Office 365 groups as well and Outlook um, groups in Outlook is this notion of external users. Right now in a Microsoft team, you can only add users that are inside your Active Directory, not maybe in a federated Office 365 organization or even in a Microsoft account that someone's spun up that they've used with their Xbox or Hotmail, or Outlook.com, so forth. So that's a big thing, but again, because Teams is built on top of Office 365 Groups core technology, it's going to be a matter of time before external groups are supported. And then the other big one uh, that's not there in preview, which I kind of use all the time in Slack, is this notion of a permalink. This allows me to basically take a thread that might be further up in the channel and grab a hyperlink reference to it and maybe, you know, send a link to this in an email or I might be IMing it to in my Microsoft team in another channel to make people easily refer and jump over and start contributing this. So the permalinks being missing is a bit of a, a drawback from a collaboration once it starts getting uh, prolific across your organizations. Um, Microsoft Teams being in preview, much like when Office 365 Groups and Groups in Outlook came out, the admin controls aren't fully fledged. Uh, you can kind of turn group teams on and off and you can start kind of introducing this in your organization by uh, um, and it, like kind of enabling it via licensing in Office 365 now so you can control who can use teams within your org. Um, but there are some things that you can't block and just turn off. And I think over time we'll start to see more of those governance controls come in for Microsoft Teams. Not everyone is going to want Giphy support, for instance. Um, there's those buttons uh, will come and you know, there'll be a lot more control for administrators in Microsoft Teams. The other big one for organizations that are concerned with this is e-discovery. The e-discovery and the compliance natures right now, they will be at a tier C level within Office 365. Over time, obviously, they're going to improve that and there'll be better tiers of compliance and there's a compliance center we can see exactly what that means for Microsoft Teams. And um, there is a roadmap which talks about how e-discovery will be available. So you'll be able to kind of you know, pull and claw based on keywords or particular users what they've done inside of Microsoft Teams from their tenure inside the company. I think much like groups in Outlook, the big kind of drawback that you're going to get by kind of making Teams your go-to from a collaboration perspective uh, is that when you create Teams, the Files Experience tab is OneDrive for Business. Now that's great for document management as long as you don't want things like metadata and workflow 
and all the other kind of advanced features you get with a SharePoint document library. Now the cool part is um, you can go and add a tab to a SharePoint document library. Now when you create a team, you do under the covers create a SharePoint team site. So you can map to that team site and get that document library. But you're still gonna get both tabs there. You're gonna have a OneDrive for business and this SharePoint document library. Now, there is ways you can kind of remove the, the pre-existing tabs, but it would be nice, for instance, if you could say like, let all my team sites just show me the SharePoint document library and not the OneDrive for business one, because I always wanna use advanced document management skills. So Teams, teams.microsoft.com, if you're logged into Office 365 already in your browser, it'll prompt you up with a window where you'll be able to download the desktop client, or you can go grab Microsoft Teams from the mobile stores. I'd encourage you to have a good play with this. Start with some small team within your organization uh, and see how you go with it. But um, just enjoy it and um, make sure you compare this to the other videos where I talked about groups in Outlook, Yammer and SharePoint too.